Welcome back everyone, my name is Arvind Reddy and in this video we'll talk about types of blockchain. Blockchain came into existence for Bitcoin, right? So they wanted to implement Bitcoin and they wanted to make it secure and that's where we have blockchain, right? On the other hand, the industries, they looked at blockchain and they thought we can implement this technology in our area. So whatever problem we are facing, can we use blockchain there? So initially when we talk about blockchain, it was majorly for cryptocurrencies. We had Bitcoin and then we came up with Ethereum and then there are a lot of coins available, right? So we have alternate coins as well and somewhere they were very happy with blockchain. But what about finance industry? What if you talk about education industry, how they can use blockchain? Now one of the issue with blockchain is some people say it's not not secure because all the transactions are open yes they are anonymous we don't know who is sending what money to which address but still you can see this stuff online because all the data of Bitcoin blockchain is available openly that's why it is named as the public blockchain it is open plus anyone can be a part of this network so let's say we have 10 nodes which is working on blockchain and now if you want to be a part of it you can do that you can have your own node and you can be a part of that open blockchain of course you can be a miner or you can just be a local node but then you are able to join that public network so that's the issue which other companies don't want they want to have their own blockchain is it possible and yes that's why we have the next type of blockchain which is private so private blockchain is especially for one company. Let's say if I feel, hey, this is my finance industry or this is my company which works with client data or money. I don't want this data to be shared with anyone else. I want to have my private blockchain. I don't want anyone else to contribute. So the number of nodes who will be validating my blockchain and the number of nodes who will be adding the blocks in my blockchain will be controlled and will be knowing about everyone. And that's where we have this private blockchain. The next one we have is federated blockchain. Now this is where you'll be having group of people or group of companies, they will be coming together to create a separate blockchain. And of course there will be someone who will be leading it, but then it will be group of people and you will be knowing everyone in the group. So let's say if you want to add a new block, you will be the known entity. It's not like a public ledger or public blockchain where anyone can be a part of that network, right? So basically we have three, we have public, which is open to the entire world. You can be a part of that network work second we have private which is only limited to one company or they might want to add the transactions privately but it will be having only right access maybe you can allow public to read the data but then the writing will be restricted on the other hand we have federated where you have group of companies working together again we have one more which is permissioned or permissionless blockchain we'll talk about that later but these are the three types now the question arises which is the best one is it public private or federation of course right public is best because anyone can be a part of it now since we are using proof of work which takes 10 minutes for each block so it is slow on the other hand when you talk about private or federated it's fast because we don't have to use pow because all the entities here are known so that's it that's the type so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos Bye bye